In this tutorial, you'll find out what the derivative of the cosine function is. But first, do you remember what the derivative of sine x is? If f of x equals sine x, what's f prime, or the derivative of f? If you ever forget what the derivative of sine of x is, you can always try graphing it. The graph of the sine function looks sort of like this. If we draw some tangent lines, we see that it's a positive slope here, there's a slope of 0 here, then a negative slope here, a slope of 0 here, and a positive slope again here. If you graph just those points to get the derivative, we start with a positive slope, slope of 0, then a negative slope, then a slope of 0, and then a positive slope again. And if we went the other way, we would have had a slope of 0, and then a negative slope. So a slope of 0, and then a negative slope. And if we connect just those points, we see we get a graph that looks like another sinusoidal function, except it starts high, and goes down on either side of x equals 0. So this is actually a cosine function. Right. The derivative of sine x is cosine x. Next, we'll take a look at the function f of x equals cosine x, and we'll find this function's derivative. But first, you'll get a chance to guess the derivative by sketching it out. Here's a graph of the cosine function, and down here you have a chance to find its derivative by dragging your finger across the screen. So as you drag your finger across, you'll see the tangent line plotted on the top graph. And when the tangent line is green, you'll know you're on the right track. When you're ready, press the check answer button to see if you found the right derivative. What does the derivative of the cosine function look like? Let's start at the very left of the graph. A tangent line here has a slope of 0. A tangent line here has a negative slope. And a tangent line here has a slope of 0 again. So if we're drawing the derivative, we want to start at 0. And then we want to go down, because the slope becomes more and more negative, until it becomes very negative over here. And then we want to go up, because the slope is becoming less negative until it becomes zero again over here. Why don't you keep drawing tangent lines to figure out what the derivative looks like and see which function it reminds you of. In case you forget what these functions on the left look like, let's quickly graph them. The sine function looks like this. It's increasing at the origin. The negative sine function is decreasing at the origin. The cosine function, which is the thing that's graphed on the right, starts at a maximum and then goes down on both sides. And the negative cosine function starts at a minimum and then goes up on both sides. Which one looks like the graph of the derivative?
Okay, now let's see if you got it right. Let's work out the derivative of cosine x. The derivative of any function f is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h in the limit as h goes to zero. Here, the function we're looking at is the cosine. So f of x plus h becomes the cosine of x plus h, and f of x becomes cosine x. Now, can you use a trig identity to find an equivalent expression for the cosine of x plus h? The identity that you want here is that the cosine of a plus b is equal to the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus sine of a times the sine of b. Try plugging in x and h for a and b to get the answer. Right, you can use the addition identity for cosines. The cosine of x plus h equals cosine x cosine h minus sine x sine h. Let's plug this expression back into the limit here. Now we'll just move the minus sine x sine h term to the front, but we're not changing the value of this expression. And since all these terms in the numerator are being divided by h, we can break this expression up into the sum of two different fractions. And now we have the limit of the sum of two different terms here. So we can break this up into the sum of two different limits. Let's look at this first limit here. The limit as h goes to zero of minus sine x sine h over h. What's an equivalent way to write this limit? In this limit, as h gets really small, minus sine of x doesn't change because there's no h in it, so it can come outside the limit sign. So we're left with minus sine of x, which doesn't have an h in it, times the limit as h goes to zero of sine of h over h. Right, here we're taking the limit of this expression as h goes to zero. x has nothing to do with this limit, so we can pull the minus sine x term outside the limit. So now, in this first term, we're left with the limit as h goes to zero of sine h over h. What does this limit equal? This is an important trig limit, and if you've forgotten it, it wouldn't hurt to check out that tutorial again. For now, you can just try plugging in a small value for h. So this limit is approximately equal to the sine of a small number, say sine of 0 0.001, divided by that small number, 0 0.001. Make sure to use radians and try plugging them in the calculator. Exactly right. This limit equals 1. So this term is minus sine x times 1, which is minus is minus sine x. Now let's take a look at this second term here. First, we can factor the cosine x out of the numerator here, 
so that it's cosine x times cosine h minus 1. And because this is a limit as h goes to 0, cosine x has nothing to do with this limit, so we can pull it out, just like we did for the minus sine x in the earlier limit. Now try evaluating this limit that we're left with, the limit as h goes to 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h. This is basically the second most important limit involving trig functions. If you ever forget what it's equal to, you can always try plugging in a very small number for h. Basically, this limit is about the cosine of a small number, 0.001 for example, minus 1 divided by 0.001. Make sure your calculator is set to radians and try plugging this in to see what the limit approaches. Right, this limit equals 0. So when we multiply cosine x by 0, we still get 0. So the cosine x term here goes away. And that leaves us with minus sine x. And that's it. The derivative of cosine x is minus sine x, just like you guessed at the beginning. Now here's another way you can write this fact. This d over dx on the left side here means that you're taking the derivative of the function inside the parentheses here. You can read this equation as the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. Okay, so the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. It turns out that you can use these two derivatives here to find the derivative of just about any trig expression, as you'll see later on, so get pumped. Okay, let's start this tutorial off with a challenge question. In the top graph here, you can make any function you want, and in the bottom graph, you'll see its derivative being plotted. Try finding a function that's the same as its derivative, and when you think you've got it, press the check button at the bottom. And no, the function I made is definitely not the same as its derivative. But when you do have a function that's the same as its derivative, press the submit button over here. We're trying to find a function whose derivative down here looks exactly the same as the function up here. So we want the orange curve to look very similar to the blue curve. If we just draw something random, we see that we get an orange curve that looks very different than the blue one. If you try to play around a little bit, we see that we can get, oh, this is getting a little bit closer. Let's try making it a little smoother. So now this is getting kind of close, but there's still some bumps here that we might want to smooth out. So to smooth those out, we can play with this function up here. Try to see if we can get a little bit smoother. See, small changes in f can sometimes lead to pretty big changes in the derivative. The derivative really cares about how quickly f is changing. If we play with it a little bit, we can get closer and closer to a function it looks quite similar. So now the blue graph up here looks almost like its derivative down here. If you think it's good enough, why don't you hit the check button and then submit. If it's not good enough, try playing with it a little bit more to see if you can get something closer. Great job! You found a function that's the same as its derivative. It turns out there are a whole bunch of them, and here's a list of candidates. Try drawing some of these functions and seeing which of them are the same as their derivatives. You know how to find the derivative of these four functions. The derivative of y equals 0 is just 0, because the derivative of any constant is 0. Notice that because y equals 0 is the same function as y prime equals 0, y is equal to y prime, so the function is equal to its derivative. Now what about the derivative of y equals x? Well, we can write x as x to the 1, so then we can use the power rule to bring the 1 in front, and then we can change this 1 to a 0. 
So what we're left with is y prime equals 1 times x to the 0, which is just 1. Now y doesn't equal y prime, so we won't select that one. What about y equals x squared? Well, the derivative of x squared is 2x, y prime equals 2x, and again, y doesn't equal y prime. Finally, if y equals sine of x, the derivative is cosine of x, and because the sine of an angle is generally not equal to the cosine of an angle, y doesn't equal y prime again. So out of the first four answer choices, the only one where the derivative was the same as the original function was y equals 0. For the last two choices, you don't know how to take the derivative yet, so why don't you try graphing them and seeing if it looks like they're the same. That is, graph e to the x and negative e to the x, and see if the derivative looks the same as the original function. So far we said y equals 0, has a derivative that's identical to itself. You could also have seen that by graphing y equals 0 here, just the line y equals 0. It's a horizontal line. And if you check, you see that the derivative is exactly the same. Now, what about the other ones? Well, we already said that these don't have the same derivative as the original function. But what about e to the x? Well, let's try graphing e to the x. It looks something like this. It gets bigger and bigger, and it gets bigger and bigger at a faster rate. That's sort of what e to the x looks like, and you see that f prime might look very similar. In fact, if we get rid of some of the kinks here, we'll see that f prime looks almost exactly like f. So e to the x might have the same derivative as itself. That's possible. And minus e to the x, if you play with the graph on the right, turns out exactly the same way. So what does minus e to the x look like? Well, it's the same thing flipped over the x-axis. So if you graph it, it's sort of like this. If you smooth out all the lumpy regions. we see that we get a function whose derivative looks very similar to itself. So that's also possible. For now, the guess is good enough. Soon we'll see how to prove this. So you think the derivative of e to the x is also e to the x. Well, let's see if you're right. Suppose the function f equals e to the x. What's the formula for the derivative of this function? Remember that the formula for a derivative is to take the difference of two y-coordinates that are very close to each other. So we take f of x plus h minus f of x, that's a change in y, we divide it by the change in x corresponding to those two points that are very close to each other, and that's x plus h minus x, or just h. And finally, we take the limit as h goes to 0, which is the limit as the two points that are making a line become very, very close to each other. Now we know what f of x is. It's e to the x. What is f of x plus h? Well, we use the formula down here, and we replace x with x plus h. So this is e to the x plus h. If you plug these two into the definition of a derivative, you should be able to find your answer. Right, let's see how you got that. First, you use the definition of the derivative. The derivative of f of x is f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h in the limit as h goes to zero. And then you use the fact that e to the x is the function you're looking at. Whatever number you stick into this function, the output is e to that number. So when the input is x plus h, the output is e to the x plus h power. And over here, f of x is e to the x. Now, what's an equivalent way to write e to the x plus h?
So we're looking for a rule that tells you what to do when you're taking a number raised to the sum of two different other numbers. For example, suppose you had 2 to the 3 plus 5. Well, that's 2 to the 8th. You could write that as 2 times 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 2. Times two. two multiplied by itself 8 times. But you could have also written that as 2 multiplied by itself 3 times times 2 multiplied by itself 5 times. So this first term here is 2 to the 3rd. This is 2 to the 5th. So 2 to the 3 plus 5 is 2 to the 3rd times 2 to the 5th. If you use that rule down here, what is e to the x plus h equal to? Exactly. e to the x plus h equals e to the x times e to the h. So let's plug this expression back into the limit up here. Notice that both terms in the numerator here have an e to the x in them, so we can factor e to the x out of this difference, giving us e to the x times e to the h minus 1. What can you do next to find this limit? Notice that we're taking a limit as h gets close to 0. As h gets closer and closer to 0, this term here certainly changes, and so does this one. But what about this one? Well, there's no h in it, so as h gets closer and closer to 0, e to the x doesn't change. It's basically a constant. What can you do when you have a limit of a constant times something that varies? Yes, because this is a limit that's taken as h goes to 0, we can pull the e to the x out of the limit. That leaves us with e to the x times the limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0. What does this limit equal? To figure out this limit, why don't you try putting in a very small value for h, say h equals 0 0.001, and use the calculator. If we plug in h equals 0 0.001 into that expression over there, we get e to the 0 0.001, and we want to subtract 1 from it, minus 1, and finally we want to divide it by 0 0.001. That gives us 1.0005. So if we put h equals 0 0.001 in, this expression here becomes 1.0005. If we put in an even smaller value for h in, we'll find that this gets closer and closer to 1. So that's our limit. Right, this limit equals 1. So the derivative is e to the x times 1, which equals e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x is indeed the very same function, e to the x. And finally, here's another way to write this fact. This d over dx here means we're taking the derivative of the function inside the parentheses here. So you can read this equation as the derivative of e to the x is e to the x.